We live in a very material world. We're very focused on the material realm, what's in front of us, physical things, and what we achieve, what we do in, in this material realm. Yet Paul, when speaking to the Corinthians and talking about the hardship he's experiencing in this realm and the material hardship, he says he doesn't focus on the seen, but on the unseen, because the seen is temporary. It doesn't last. It changes. He's talking here about the material. It's seen and it doesn't last. Whereas the unseen is eternal. It's of a different order. It's from a different realm that won't fade and pass away. He's not here talking about primarily seeing angels or seeing things in the spirit realm. He's speaking much deeper than that. He's speaking to the nature of who we are and what our purpose is. And we're going to look briefly at this in this video. So if I join up this idea of focusing on the unseen, not the seen, if I join it up with Hebrews chapter 11, which looks at faith and creation and creating a record in our lives, a testimony, then we'll unlock some secrets and then we'll briefly jump into the creation story. In Hebrews 11 verse 3, we understand that the worlds were created by God, not from what is visible, but from what is invisible. So God created, if you like, the world invisibly in himself before he then released it and it became visible. He's done that with everything he's created. This is the way that God works. He draws on hidden things and then exposes them and they become visible. In the same way that Christ died before the foundation of the world. It was a hidden secret. And then finally it broke into the record, if you like. It became visible 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked on the earth and then gave himself up on the cross and rose from the dead. He manifested what God had hidden within himself. In verse 1 of Hebrews, he talks about faith and what it is. And he's talking about how we should live and how we as people of following Jesus should use people of the past as an example, how they lived by faith. They didn't focus on the material. They looked to the unseen. They looked at things they had not yet seen. For instance, he quotes Abraham, who was looking for a city. Now, he wasn't looking for an earthly city. He left an earthly city. He was looking for a different kind of city that wasn't visible but was invisible. And that is more important than what is visible. So if we try and decode Hebrews 11, chapter 1, out of its religious wording and mindset, because the problem for us is we hear so many words out of the scriptures and they take on this religious attachment to them. So we miss the point. And if you look at what faith is, in Hebrews 11, chapter 1, it says it's the conviction of things not seen and the assurance of things hopeful. Now, the conviction of things not seen, it sounds, it's all the proof. Other versions use the proof. In the Greek, it's saying it's something is exposed. It's like an archaeologist who's digging in the ground and you can see nothing, but slowly he digs and uses his paintbrushes and scrapes away the dirt and you start to see a treasure that's been hidden. That's the concept, if you like, that's going on here. It's saying that faith exposes what is hidden. It brings it to light. So joining that up with this thought, it's like faith makes what is invisible available to see. And this is what these great men of old did, as this scripture is saying. They saw something that you couldn't see. They exposed it until it became a record in their lives and they lived from it. It's what Paul is saying when he says, I'm not going to focus on what is seen, the material and how I'm being persecuted. I'm going to draw on the record of Jesus Christ, his command to me to go and preach the gospel. I'm living from that reality that I'm seeing and it's manifesting through me. Now, this is key to who you are. You're someone who God has made in his image to access 
invisible realities, things that are more real than the visible, and if you like, frame them up so that they become part of your being and of your life. Now, the ultimate goal is not that they materially manifest, though they might materially manifest. The goal is that you become a conduit, a river, a, a stream of these things, a stream of life of these things that you perceive in God and in his glory hidden realities. You see them, you see them stronger and stronger until you frame them up in your being and you release them and they come out through you. Now that might change things. It might cause people to be healed. It might call, cause provision to come around you. But the point is that something eternal is manifesting through you. So I said we'd go to the creation story. When God creates Adam in Genesis chapter 2, in that story, he, it says he brings to him the animals and Adam names them. Now this is a hugely significant part of the story. Why is it there? It must be important because there's, if you like, Genesis 1 to 3 is very condensed. So what is mentioned is obviously very significant. So why bring this up? Because this is clearly part of the nature of what Adam is. And it leads to him seeing that it would be good for him to have woman. And so woman is drawn out from him. So he has all these animals brought to him. You've got to understand with the creation story that it's not going to be materialistically literal as we, we might want to think as Westerners. That's obvious by some of the things in it. You should see that. Like the fact that Eden, the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve are placed, is not accessible and is after they sin and it is hidden from them and others by three beings by two cherubim and a flaming sword. And they refuse to let people in. Now, if that was a physical place, how would that work? This is clearly much deeper than that. It's a place that's guarded by spiritual beings that can no longer be simply accessed in the same way that Adam and Eve could just walk in. You have to come by another way. You have to come through them. So it's not purely physical material, though, of course, there may be overlap here. So the understanding of the animals coming to Adam. Here's what I suggest to you. It's the same process that we've just seen in Hebrews chapter 11, where God forms things from the invisible, speaks them into being. However, we would need to understand that. That's a huge thing. But he speaks them into being and they become. They now, there is now a record. It's visible. You can play the record and hear the song. You can see it. It's come out of the hiddenness within God. It seems like God brings the hiddenness of the animals to Adam. And now Adam names them. And if you know anything about Hebraic understanding, names are so important and naming things. So God names creation. He brings it into being. Adam names the animals. So he perceives their hidden shape, form, nature, and speaks it into being, and that's what they become and operate in. He cooperated with God. God showed him the his hiddenness, and he spoke it into being. This is keeping your eyes on focused on the unseen, not on the scene. And of course, the animals manifest. They are now, there's now a visible record. But that's drawn from Adam seeing them in the unseen. So this is how you work. You were not meant to be primarily focused on the material realm. That's part of our, the fall, our nature, that we have now become glued to this physicality. But it's actually meant to be the lower part of the realms of reality that we move in. Because you are someone who can seek, know, and perceive the secret nature and heart of God 
in the unseen realm, the hidden glories of God, hidden in darkness, if you like, so that you can bring them to the surface. And that works as simply as you perceive how God loves deep in your being, you see him, and that manifests through you to creative miracles, to healing, to operating extraordinarily in the heavens. Even if nothing material evolves, things spiritual might evolve as a result of you interacting with the secret hidden glory hidden in God and seeing the purposes there and speaking them out. This is your inheritance, that you are not trapped, limited, bound by material and what it will form. It's Material is important stuff, it counts, but it's not the source of reality. You, just like Adam, are a bridge between the secret things hidden in God and their manifesting. Wow! We truly are children of God, made in His image. What a chance, what a responsibility, what a joy to grow into that. And this is going to take more than just a short material lifetime. We live in this for a short time, but this will go on as we increase, as Paul says in that passage in Corinthians, he says that we will experience a glory that is beyond comparison with anything else. In other words, this we will go from glory to glory to glory, and it will be ever increasingly amazing as we draw on the hidden resources that God has that we cannot even yet comprehend and that are unlimited and see them manifested through our lives and to other people. So that's worth thinking about when we begin our day and we're aware of the hassles, the restrictions, the persecution. You do not live from material seem. You are someone who is so extraordinarily beautiful and big on the inside that you need the strength of God to enable you to walk in that bigness, perceive the hidden secrets of God, taste them, feel them till they become part of you and flow through you. That's glory.